Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at the completely redesigned New Balance 1080 V13. We'll also compare it to the Vongo V6, and then we'll also touch on the New Balance More V4. Let's run with it. Now, before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The 1080 series from New Balance is one of their most popular running shoe lines. It's their flagship premium neutral daily trainer. And if you're someone who needs a running shoe to just kind of handle a wide variety of runs or just absorb a ton of miles, that is where this comes in. It's also really popular with walkers or for people who are on their feet all day just because you have a lot of cushion and a really luxurious upper and some decent styling as well. I know New Balance gets a kind of a bad rap as being a dad shoe, but they've been really upping their style game here recently. And for someone who likes the 1080 but needs a little bit of stability, that is where the Vongo comes in, as it's basically the stability counterpart to the 1080. And if you're someone who wants a little bit more cushion, you can kind of go up to the more V4. And I'll put an asterisk on that because it really has almost become comparable to the more V4 with this new update to the 1080 V13. And I'm really curious to see what they do with the more V5, just because they added so much stack height here that these two are almost within line of each other. And this new updated foam, I think is much better than we see on the more V4. As far as price goes, both the Vongo and the 1080 cost $165. Well, the more is surprisingly $15 cheaper at $150. As far as the weight goes, the Vongo comes in at 10.7 ounces. The more V4 is 10.5 and the 1080 V13 lost almost a full ounce weighing now 9.3 ounces, making this a much more manageable daily trainer, which I'm very happy to see. For stack height, the Vongo comes in with 30 millimeters in the heel and a six millimeter drop. The more V4 has 34 millimeters in the heel with a four millimeter drop. And then the 1080 is completely redone this year now with 33 millimeters in the heel and an updated six millimeter drop. And I believe compared to last year, this got about three or four more millimeters of stack height. So we come down almost an ounce and we get roughly three or four more millimeters to the midsole, which is always a change I like to see. Moving on to the uppers, both the 1080 and the Vongo had a very similar experience with their knit like fabric. Breathability was okay. But I will say, even though these shoes felt true to size with regard to length, they felt a little bit narrow, especially through the midfoot and towards the top of the lacing system. And again, the same thing goes for the Vongo as well. That's a little bit different if you compare it to the more V4. I thought this was very spacious, plenty of room in the toe box and through the midfoot. Also has a kind of a lighter engineered fabric compared to the knit material we see on these options. So I would just keep that in mind. Now the 1080 does come in widths narrow uh, through extra wide, I believe. So if you're someone who needs that extra room, I do recommend bumping up that extra width. And that is, I think, limited on certain colorways, but I will say, I think again, both the Bongo and the 1080 feel rather narrow. Now, because they're, they were a little bit narrow, I thought the lockdown was quite good. And this updated tongue has a moderate amount of padding and is gusseted on both sides unlike the more, which that was kind of the one letdown for me here where it was just a little bit too thin and floppy and it wasn't gusseted. So it was kind of all over the place. So with that being said, I do like the volume on the more V4 and I kind of wished we had the same experience with the 1080 and the Vongo, but they did a great job with the tongue and also the ankle and Achilles area. The heel counter on the 1080 is a little bit more flexible compared to the Vongo, which I think I guess makes sense because the Vongo is a stability shoe, but they have about the same amount of padding in the ankle and Achilles region. And I thought the lockdown was quite good as well, which may be the reason uh, or kind of be part of the reason why these shoes were a little bit snug. Uh, the more has a little bit less padding in the ankle and Achilles area, but I did find the lockdown to work quite good here as well. And now for the midsoles, which is actually quite funny because they're all labeled as Fresh Foam X, but it doesn't really make any sense because they all feel completely different. So I'll do my best to explain each shoe and how they feel, even though they're all labeled as the same foam. So starting with the Vongo Fresh Foam X, we have two different layers of that foam with a softer foam on top and a more firm foam on the bottom separated by an EVA film plate, which is asymmetrical. It goes lower on the lateral side and higher on the medial side, which means you have that base firmer foam that comes up a little bit higher on the medial side, which keeps your foot from rolling inward. So basically two layers of foam, softer layer on top, more firm layer on the bottom with a plate in between those that's asymmetrical, which means you have a little bit more firm foam on the medial side to again, keep your foot from rolling inwards. 
Now that's completely different compared to the neutral shoe we have here with the star of the show, the 1080 V13, which is just fresh foam X through and through, no plates, no different densities or anything like that. And this feels significantly softer, bouncier, and just more fun compared to the 1080 V12, which I thought was just, just soft. It didn't really have a whole lot of life to it. Um, and this version, much more springy, just a little bit more dense, if that makes any sense. It feels like you just have a kind of a more dense, soft, springy foam underneath your foot. And I want to kind of emphasize that because I do think the 1080 V13 here is kind of even better compared to the Mac Cushion version, which is the more V4. And I would love to see the more V5 have the foam we see on the 1080 V13 because again the foam on the more v4 at least for me personally i thought it was just soft didn't have a ton of life to it and since you have this cut out underneath the heel i kind of felt that um, every so often that is not the case with the 1080 v13 now the one thing that i think the more has over the new version of the 1080 is it is significantly more stable partially because you have those walls of foam on the lateral and medial side and it has such a wide base to it which just gives it some more inherent stability and i do think that this new version of the 1080 is because this new foam is so squirrely and soft it's going to be rather unstable or much less stable compared to prior versions and that kind of brings me to back to the vongo so if you like the 1080 but you need a little bit more guidance i think that's where the vongo comes in now the vongo even with that top layer of soft foam is not as energetic or as soft compared to the foam we see on the 1080 v13 now the vongo even though it's classified as a stability shoe in my mind it's more of a light stability shoe if you need a true max stability experience i think new balance has like the 860 which has that true medial post i really do want to emphasize that the 1080 feels nothing like last year it feels like a completely different shoe partially because it lost almost an ounce in weight making this a much more versatile daily trainer and has more midsole foam underneath with that foam compound just having a lot more life to it feels closer to like fuel cell foam like we have here on the sc trainer than it does to last year's fresh foam x so i'm happy to see new balance make making like a really good adjustment to really compete with a lot of these other springier bouncier and i think more fun daily trainers that we're seeing from pretty much every other brand nowadays if we move on to the allen Soul, both the 1080 and the vongo have a very similar traction pattern where you have these kind of vertical flex screws instead of the horizontal ones like we see with the more or most other conventional running shoes this is supposed to try to stiffen up the forefoot a bit kind of it's like a step down from a plate if you will instead of having a plate through the midsole you kind of have this rubber that adds rigidity to the midsole and i think this does a decent job of kind of helping you notice that rocker geometry and really does really stiffen up the forefoot just a bit more than when we saw on previous versions now even though both the vongo and the 1080 had that kind of vertical outsole rubber pattern they are still more flexible compared to the more with its massive midsole which is very rigid just to get a little bit of bend towards the top of the toe box and this thing does not want to twist at all where the 1080 with that much softer foam is a little bit more flexible especially through the the midfoot and then has a little rigidity uh, through the forefoot because again of those vertical rubber lug patterns so at the end of the day i think this new version of the 1080 almost makes it like the new more and new balance will have to do something with the more v4 or the more v5 to make it completely different compared to this new 1080 v13 just because it got thicker it's pretty much within striking range with regard to stack height and it's lighter so i really kind of makes me excited for the vong or the more v5 uh, just because if it's anything like the phone we see here with the 1080 v13 i think i will like it quite a bit and then if we kind of pull it back to the vongo i think this is you know a moderate light stability shoe it does a decent job and, and honestly it's kind of surprising when you first put it on it kind of feels more like a neutral shoe than anything else and it only really feels like a stability shoe if you kind of throw on a neutral shoe next to it but i think it works quite well if you're someone who needs just a little bit of guidance and wants plenty of cushioning underfoot and i think they did a decent job with this formulation of fresh from x making it rather energetic just not as energetic like we see with this brand new version of the 1080 well that concludes the review let me know down in the comments what you think of new balance running shoes and which new balance shoe would you like to try i would love to hear from you well i'm ryan from ryan's running reviews and i'll catch you guys on the next one thanks